Assalamu alaikum and welcome to uh, Muslim Met Collective's uh, second self-alignment session of 2021. I will be your host uh, slash moderator today. My name is Salima. And I, as we're getting started, we want to first start off with introductions. So if you could say your name and where you are tuning, currently tuning in to from right now. So again, my name is Salima and I am in Houston, Texas. So ladies, jump in and let us know where you're, you're tuning in from today. My name is Sasha Simmons and Houston used to be my home, but then I moved to beautiful Memphis. <laughs> Welcome. My name is Zainab and I'm tuning in from Houston, Texas. Welcome. Glad to have you. Assalamu alaikum. This is Rakaya and Shadisa. And we're Houston. Awesome. Welcome. And last but not least. She said a picture is worth a thousand words. <laughs> right. <laughs> she read it, stepped away for a second. Um, so she'll introduce herself when um, when she gets back. Okay. And so we'll go ahead and jump into it. Um, so before we get started with our uh, program today, I just want to talk a little bit about uh, who we are and why we're doing this. So we are, um, this program is being brought to you today uh, by Muslimet Collective, which is a 501c3 nonprofit organization um, based in Houston. And it's an organization that's um, run by women, for women, um, with our mission um, being to create um, community amongst women, regardless of where you come from, um, which groups you belong to, economic status or anything, that we're just here to create uh, specifically social spaces for women to gather, um, get to know one another, to support one another in um, business, education, um, entertainment, and service. Um, and so we are, we've been operating since we became a 501c3 in 2019, but we've been operating since 2016. Um, and we host several programs, this one uh, being a self-alignment session, which is a bi-monthly program uh, for women uh, specifically that is, is around self-care. How do we take better care of ourselves? Um, and, and so the topics are all around things that are relevant um, to women, and we'll talk about uh, the one we're going to do today. And so that is offered um, every other month on the third uh, Saturday of the month. Typically, it's later in the evening, but because of daylight saving times and how it threw everything off, we had to move it a little bit earlier this month. Um, we also have a second program uh, called uh, Back to Life. It's a game night for ladies only. We haven't had one in 2021 yet, because uh, last month, as you know, in Texas, we had a, a storm that we had to uh, postpone the event, but basically the, the monthly game night is um, uh, for ladies only, and we play games um, online as a way to get to know each other, to have a little bit of fun, to get a little competitive, um, to blow off some steam. Uh, and so it's a really, really good time. And again, that's, so it alternates every other month with the self-alignment session as well. We also um, are doing and trying to bring back, uh, Lord willing, the uh, Sisters Iftar during Ramadan. So Ramadan is coming and um, inshallah. And so we do a, a gathering for sisters where we come together, break our fast, eat, eat, talk, um, and, and kind of connect. So we hope to bring that back um, this Ramadan. We weren't able to do it last Ramadan because of COVID. Um, so we're hoping that we might be able to figure out a way to do that this time. And then we have our marquee event, which is the Beyond the Veil fashion show. Uh, which had its first showcase in 2021. I'm sorry, it is 2021, 2017. Um, and so we are, 2021 would be our fifth show, Lord willing, if we can get that off the ground. Um, and again, that's a celebration of fashion, of femininity, of, uh, of women, business. And so it's a really a good time. And um, 
And so that's what we do. Again, we are we create social spaces for women to gather um, and get to know one another and support one another. Uh, because of COVID, we it has allowed us to expand our reach because um, we're doing a lot of things virtually now. And so uh, that's been an exciting uh, uh, development. So I had a PowerPoint presentation, but I'm just going I just told you everything, so I'm not going to pull that up. Um, but if you are interested in learning more, you can follow us on Facebook at Muslimet Collective um, and Instagram as well. We are on Twitter. We do have a website, MuslimetCollective.com, but it is currently under construction. Uh, so, you know, stay tuned. We'll be launching, uh, relaunching that uh, pretty soon. And um, and that we have ways to... Um, uh, to to connect with us, where our uh, other events are coming up. If you would like to donate, those information will um, be there as well. So just a little bit about who we are and why we do what we do. Uh, so now we'll go ahead and get into the program a little bit. But before we do that, we want to do a little bit of an icebreaker. Um, so I'm going to, I don't know how many people are familiar with uh, Zoom whiteboard, but I'm going to share my screen and pull up the whiteboard. Um, and so what, what we like to do with these sessions is we like to ask a question to kind of get our audience, you know, kind of juices flowing and sharing a little bit. And so we get to know a little bit about where you are um, in your journey. So today our topic is around nutrition, healthy nutrition and healthy plates and health, you know, feeling better um, uh, one, one bite at a time. <laughs> um, and so how would so the question for today uh and then so if, if you're not familiar with whiteboard you just you if you go to options and click annotate it'll allow you to write on the screen and typically it's anonymous at least that's what i think uh, so we won't know who wrote it but um the question today is um you know when you think about nutrition or healthy eating uh maybe share if you could share one thing that you find helpful and one thing that you may be struggling with. It could be one word, it could be a sentence, um, but just something when you think healthy nutrition, um, what are you doing well and what do you think you're, you know, could improve upon? And we'll just take about five minutes to, to see what we say. You can also push the text box and it'll allow you to type instead of having to freehand it. Nobody? I see a uh, need to increase fruits and veggies. Anybody else? I was getting there. I'm working several windows. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I tried to type, but it's not working. <laughs> not for me, but I mean, I can say my, I can say it. Okay. That's fine. Go ahead. You can say it. Varied viewpoints and marketing campaigns. There are benefits and mm -hmm. definitely. Uh, <laughs> yes. Yes. Especially when they're done by those who are promoting certain things. Okay. Definitely the marketing campaign. They make it look so good. <laughs> you just got to have it. Exactly. Absolutely. And so this is totally voluntary. Did anybody else want to share? 
I was going to say uh, consistency. I'm sorry, I'm using my sister's phone. I'm not too familiar with how all of her little buttons work, so I couldn't type it in. Okay. Consistency. Oh, sorry. Got it. You see it? So I'm saying, I'm yes. Our folks on Facebook, we have some Facebook um, participants saying, um, help to not purchase snacks. Meal prepping helps to stay to stay on track. So I'm saying, I'm yes. Oh, sorry, I got to. Um, help to not. Okay, I also got um another uh, comment like in de decreasing sodium in the diet, mm -hmm. uh, salt intake. Mm -hmm. All right. So yeah, we're all in different phases of our nutrition journey and trying to um, to you know stay consistent with you know healthier choices, not getting sucked into the marketing um, and the of, of of the food, making it look good and even tasting good, but it's not good for us. So hopefully, our presenters today um, can talk to us about you know how do we address these issues. So let me. Let's see if I can get out. Uh, this. There we go. Okay. Hania, can you do me a favor and stop sharing my screen? For some reason, it is not letting me do it. Yeah, Come on. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you? Okay. Yeah. For some reason, it's, it's not allowing me to stop sharing my screen. There we go. All right. Okay, so we'll go ahead and jump into our uh, uh, jump in with our first presenter this this um, evening, and her name is uh, Zainab Muhammad, uh, who is a native Houstonian. She's passionate about patient care and self development. Currently, she works as a registered nurse on a medical sur surgical unit um, here in Houston. She holds a bachelor's degree in nutritional science from Texas A and M and a bachelor's of science in nursing from Texas Women's University. Through her education and work experience, she has learned firsthand the importance of nutrition while working with patients. She believes that nutrition is important because it directly impacts health. Uh, in her spare time, she enjoys spending time with her family, running, yoga, gardening, and finding new adventures to explore. So without further ado, uh, welcome Zainab. Welcome everyone. I can hear you. You guys can hear me? I can hear you better now. Okay, I'll try to talk louder. Yeah. Let me share my screen. Okay, so in this presentation, we're just gonna be talking about improving our health through nutrition. So um, why is nutrition important? Can anybody tell me? Um, food is fuel. So what you put in your body is going to impact how your body works. Correct. So nutrition is important because it is a source of fuel, a source of energy for us. Um, also, nutrition is important for our growth, maintenance, and development of our body. And also, one of the things that's important about nutrition is that it can also help us reduce the risk of getting like, um, like different diseases such as heart disease or strokes or osteoporosis. Okay, so um, there are, before I get into this, there are six major types of nutrients that we need, and those consist of carbohydrates, um, fats, proteins, 
vitamins, minerals, and water. Um, the first um, nutrient that I'm gonna talk about is carbohydrate. So what is a carbohydrate? So a carbohydrate is one of the main um, macronutrients and all that macronutrient means is that it's one of the foods that we eat the most of. And so carbohydrates are a source of energy for our bodies. And it's recommended that our daily intake is about 45 to 65 percent 45 to 65 percent of our meals are carbohydrates. And this is based on um, your caloric intake. And your caloric intake is, it depends on whether you're male or female, and it also depends on your age. Um, different types of carbohydrates. So the different types of carbohydrates we have are sugar, starches, and fibers. I'm going to get more into detail about these different types of carbohydrates. And if anyone has any type of questions or is confused about anything, please let me know and I'll try to explain in the best way possible. Okay, so sugars. So um, sugars are naturally occurring in a lot, lots of fruits and vegetables. Um, one type of sugar is fructose, which is found in bananas and berries. Um, in our a diet, in American diets, we tend to eat a lot of added sugars and refined sugars. Mm -hmm. And these are things like cookies, sodas, juices, um, snacks. And these things lead to like the development of obesity. Um, they can also increase our chances of other health diseases such as diabetes, type 2 diabetes specifically. It is recommended that we try to eat less than 10% um, of our diet includes added sugars or refined sugars. Starches. So starches are considered more complex carbohydrates. So they're more complex sugars. Um, it's preferred that we eat starches because we will gradually um, release sugar into our bloodstream. And this is important because when you're eating starches, it's important that um, your blood sugars are, are gradually um, released. You don't want to have rapid spikes in your sugar levels because this can lead to increased um, releases of insulin, which is a hormone in our body. And um, if we are having dysfunctions in the amount of sugar that's being released and we're having spikes in our sugar levels, um, this can potentially lead to insulin resistance and this, and which will also lead to type two diabetes. So it's good to eat starches because they will help our bodies to release sugars gradually versus um, added sugars or like refined starches that will release sugars um, very, um, what's the word I'm looking for? They will cause spikes in our blood sugar levels, which are not good. It's not, um, it's not good for our blood vessels. It can lead to things like atherosclerosis and other diseases. So some good sources of starches are potatoes, whole grain foods such as brown rice and oats, um, squash, yams, kidney beans, maybe beans. Okay, so the last category of carbohydrates there is fiber. So fiber doesn't actually provide any calories, nor does it convert like glucose into any type of energy. But fiber is helpful in order for us to have like normal bowels. Um, it also helps us to eliminate waste so that we don't have like buildup of um, food or waste in our intestines and stuff. Um, it's recommended that we eat about 14 grams for every thousand calories and some good sources include uh, fruits such as apples, bananas, pears, vegetables like broccoli, um, oats, barley, lentils, chickpeas. Okay, protein. So protein is very important for the body. Um, it's a building block for things such as bones, muscles, skin. Um, it helps 
to build and repair our tissues and protein is actually part of red blood cells in order for us to uptake oxygen. Um, as well as it's part, proteins make up enzymes that digest our food. So it's recommended that we eat about 10 to 35% of our uh, caloric intake is protein. And some good sources of protein are eggs, almonds, oats, um, different types of meats, peanuts, and all types of fish. Okay, fats. So fat provides our body with energy. It protects your organs um, from being damaged and it keeps your body warm. Fat also is necessary for us to be able to absorb different nutrients and for us to produce hormones. For instance, estrogen is um, a hormone that uh, is produced because of fat. Different types of unhealthy fats are like saturated fats and trans fats. These are fats that can be naturally occurring in some foods. And a lot of times when we look at like the nutritional facts on food products, we can see where it says like the amount of saturated fats and trans fats. Um, and these fats basically can it increase your risk of like cardiovascular disease. And this is because they increase the levels of bad cholesterol and that can clog your arteries and that can lead to different types of cardiovascular diseases such as like heart attacks or atherosclerosis or diabetes and different things like that. Some good sources of fat are fish. Um, canola oil is a good source, walnuts, pumpkin seeds. And our recommended amount of fat is about 20 to 35% of our caloric intake. Um, it's also recommended that for saturated fats that we eat less than 10% of our total fat. Um, and we want to make sure that we're getting omega-3 fatty acids and omega-6 omega fatty acids. And those different types of fatty acids are found in the sources, the fish and different things like that. Okay, vitamins and minerals. So on, on this slide, on this um, slide show, I just show the different types of vitamins and minerals. Vitamins and minerals are necessary for a normal body functioning. Um, and there are different sources such as milk, cheese, fish, spinach, avocados. Um, I do want to address something that a person brought up. Um, someone said that they need to decrease their sodium levels. Um, some ways in order to do that is to increase um, foods that are high in potassium. Um, they have an inverse relationship, sodium and potassium. Um, sometimes we overlook vitamins and minerals and their importance, um, but being deficient or having too much of these vitamins or minerals can have um, very serious problems. We can go have different um, irregularities with our hearts. We can become confused it can lead to a lot of different problems. So vitamins and minerals are very important and um, we can get them in all the different types of foods that we eat. Um, me, I know that for myself, just because I may not be getting all the vitamins and minerals that I need in my diet, I like to take a multi, multivitamin slash multimineral, but that's just my preference. Is there a recommendation of the uh, brands of multivitamin that um, you could take? Because I know often when you go to the store, um, you're not quite sure which one to get. And there are so many brands available. There are brands. Um, you know what? I'm going to get a one second so I can show you which one I specifically use. Give me one moment. Assalamualaikum, everyone who's joined. Assalamualaikum, Bayina. Assalamualaikum, Salima. Nice having you all here. 
Hey, Alec and Sorry for the delay. Alec and ladies. Peace and blessings. Currently, I'm using this is called Vita Fusion Women's, but normally I use, I believe it's called One a Day Women's. And yeah, I, I believe normally for me, I use One a Day Women's. Um, Thank you. Um, no problem. And um, these are just some resources that are helpful that talks about like the different amounts of foods that we should be eating. Um, I know that it's difficult in order to think of things in terms of like calories and things of that nature. So these uh, resources, the dietary guidelines and my plate are helpful resources in order to um, like give you a picture of a plate and how much of that plate should be fruits, veggies, or they'll tell you like you should have a cup and a half of fruits and veggies or um, half a cup of, or, or maybe a cup of dairy and different things of that nature. So these are definitely some helpful resources um, that are like more visual in order to help um, people to understand what the amount of different foods that they should be eating as well. Any questions? Um, I have a question. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, so one of the, I guess, things that are out is like this no carb type of diet or very little carbs. How do you know like the right amount if you're trying to lose weight? Because I do know you have to be like at a caloric deficit to lose weight. Yes. So I'm not, I am not a dietitian um, and I'm not a doctor. Um, the basic idea with losing weight is you have to be in a deficit. Um, so for instance, if normally you are eating about 2000 calories, um, and you want to lose weight, typically you want to lose about a pound a week. Um, I believe one pound is 500 calories. So if you want that deficit, then maybe you would want to eat maybe like 1500 calories instead of 2000, but you would have to be consistent at that as well. And then a lot of times it's about what you're eating, not the amount of calories as well. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, and so did you have any um, <clears throat> recommendations? I know nutrition is, you know, so much bigger than weight loss, um, although that's how, you know, nutrition is kind of couched sometimes. Um, so, we, you know, the idea is to um, eat uh, variety and uh, a variety of color and, and, and types of foods, um, getting that balance in. Um, but as it, it pertains to, um, you know, like kind of seeing what you're eating, right? Like having a log, do you have recommendations on like a, a way to do that um, or an app that you use uh, to help with that so that you can kind of get a sense of like what you're eating and how many calories you're actually eating versus what you might think? You know what, Saluma, there is an app. I can't remember the name of it right now, but I can definitely get it back to you. There is an <laughs> app that tells you um, the amount of calories you're eating um, based upon what you put into their system. Mm -hmm. But I'll definitely get that information back to you. Okay. Any other questions or comments? I guess a follow up to that is like, how important is it to be tracking um, what you what you're eating? Like, you know, how important is that for us? Whether it's, you know, you have the, whether you have weight loss goals or just, you know, just healthy eating goals, you know, how important is that? It's very important because this all surrounds your health. 
And if you're not eating right, you can find your, yourself having some type of health problem, whether it's um, one thing that plagues, I would say, for instance, the African-American community is diabetes, hypertension, um, those two things I know off the top of my head. And not saying, not saying that um, there are not other factors that can come into that as well, but nutrition is very big and very important. And some of the ways that we can reduce, for instance, hypertension. Again, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a dietitian, but some of the ways that we can reduce um, having hypertension is decreasing our sodium intake. Um, also, I know we're not on this subject, but exercise is important as well. Mm -hmm. So in order for us to be able to live healthier lives, we have to be um, cautious and we have to be aware about what we're putting into our bodies and how that's going to affect us. And a lot of times we see the, we see the end product of this years down the line. We may not see how our choices and foods are affecting us right now in that instance, but later on down the line, we may have a lot of health conditions and health problems because of the choices that we made as far as food. Mm -hmm. Great, great. Any other questions for our uh, presenter, our first presenter today? All right, well, we, we so appreciate you. She's not leaving. So if you come up with another question later on in the presentation, um, you know, feel free to jot it down and then and, and we can ask it later. But we really appreciate uh, the information you presented to us today, uh, Zainab, just kind of helping us to understand, you know, food types and getting the right balance um, in in our in our on our plates and, and hopefully in our diets to give us so that food like someone said earlier is fueling us um instead of harming us um because of what we're eating and, and how much we're eating because i think we didn't even talk about like portion size and and, and all you know that as well um all, so it's such a complex topic but we appreciate just having those basic building blocks so that we know like when it says carbs, we know we understand what that means now. Uh, so thank you so much uh, for your presentation. And so we'll go ahead and jump into our next presenter. We'll introduce her first. And oh, so, go ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm following the Facebook chat. There was a question. How do you know what to buy with so many chemicals in the food? How do you know what to buy? That came from our viewer, Yolanda. Read the ingredients. <laughs> yes, reading the ingredients are is very important. And also um, a lot of the ingredients are in such scientific wording that is hard for us to understand. And as someone who is not in, I guess if a person is not um, in this type of environment, it's harder for them to be able to look at the ingredients and know exactly um, what it is. I would say that the best thing that a person can do is to look up Google. What, is, what does this ingredient mean? What does dextrose mean? What does maltose mean? Are there any particular ingredients that we should kind of shy away from if we see it in on the if we see it in the ingredient list on a product um so one thing that i would definitely say that we should shy away from is added sugars or refined sugars so those are just sugars that are not naturally occurring in like fruits and um that are not naturally occurring in foods majority of the time you're going to see you have natural sugars that occur in fruits and veggies, but you're gonna have added sugars and things like I was saying, like sodas or crackers, honey, oatmeal, um, different things like that. And they have a lot of different names for those things. Like they have, they'll say honey or they'll say maltose or they'll say high fructose corn syrup. Um, so I guess it's important to learn about what is the added sugar? What are the different names of added sugars and stuff like that? So that if a person sees these ingredients, 
then they'll know, okay, that means it's the added sugar. Um, also, another thing that it's important for people to look at is that when they're looking at the nutritional facts, the ingredients that they see at the highest are the ones that are in um, the largest amount. The ones that are the lowest are in the least amount. So if the first ingredient you see on a product says sugar, it's high in sugar and everything else behind it, it has less amounts of those things. Mm -hmm. And then also with the sugar part, anything that ends in OSE is um, typically that's a that's a that's a way to identify. So you have dextrose, sucrose, um, um, any of those that that like that OSE ending is an indicator that that's a sugar. So it's just another little tip or trick. Um, to identify what you're, what you're, so you might see, you might see fructose, uh, high fructose corn syrup, you see, you know, and you'll see all of that in, in there. So it's like, you know, even if the sugars is at the top, it'll be like sucrose later and dextrose and, and all of that. And so that's all, all of that is sugar in your, um, in your ingredients. Okay. Was there any other questions? All right. I did want to say, and I'm hoping that Sasha talks on this, is how exactly we're cooking foods. That's also very important. Like eating veggies, you can't just eat veggies. You have to make sure like you're not denaturing them by like frying them and stuff. So I was hoping that Sasha talks on that type of stuff, but I wanted to mention that. We will discuss. Definitely. <laughs> So that is a good segue. I will go ahead and introduce our next speaker. Um, oh, wait a minute, let me find the right screen. I got too many screens up. There we go. So our next speaker is uh, Ms. Sasha Simmons and she's a board certified oncology massage and prenatal and postpartum massage therapy therapist, excuse me, a healthy eating advocate and the owner of The Blissful Womb, a massage company for new and expected mothers. She has over 16 years of experience ranging from coaching and development, spa management, consulting, and business operations. Her business acumen has allowed her to offer her specialized techniques um, and services to clients throughout the U.S. and in Central and South America. It is through her work in oncology that Sasha came to truly understand the power of a plant-based lifestyle and its connection to true health. And I will let her tell that story. Um, uh, so today she is a healthy eating advocate and author of plant-based cookbooks and is about to launch a health and wellness lifestyle company that she is utilizing not only her own continue to improve health, but to help others um, as well, sorry. Um, who are looking to transition from the standard American diet and the illness that comes with it to a plant-based lifestyle that allows them to thrive and live abundantly. And so I skipped over some aspects of her bio because I think it would be more powerful coming from her than for me to read it. So without further ado, um, take it away, Sasha. Thank you so much. Assalamualaikum to all of the wonderful and amazing people that are watching this today. Um, I want to thank you very much for allowing me to be the one of the presenters uh, that will be showcasing how to make um, plant-based foods something that could be part of your everyday world. Uh, as Salima stated, I am a plant-based eater and an advocate for it. Um, I have been eating this way for a very long time and it was a transitional situation. A lot of education does need to go into these types of eating lifestyles because to Zainab's uh, point and to the, the, the questioner's point, you know, there's a lot of confusion around what is something that's healthy or how do you know what it is that is going to um, harm you. To have to learn a scientific glossary around your food is a real challenge and for many people can be very, um, very challenging and make you feel overwhelmed to the point where you just don't want to try anymore. And I think that earlier the question that came up 
um, about what are some of the things that um, cause us to have some benefit and some challenge. For me, the reason why I set opinions in marketing campaigns is because so often we have conflicting opinions about what is going to keep us healthy, what types of foods we should be eating. And depending on who is promoting a marketing campaign, whether it be um, uh, an industry that is promoting um, sugary foods or chemical laden sodas or what have you, the consumer and those of us who are really just trying to figure it out really have no idea what direction to go and who to listen to and believe. And so what I would say in regards to that question, and then I want to go to how I really got to this place, is I would say scrap looking at the labels. Eat whole plant-based foods or whole foods. And when I say that, I mean foods that are in the closest unprocessed way. If you can find brown rices, wild rices. Well, you don't have to look up what ingredients are in wild rice because it's just wild rice. If you're eating tomatoes, ideally, I would prefer that they're organic, but everybody has their own budget and priorities. But you don't have to look up what a tomato is or what ingredient is in it because it's the way that Allah made it naturally. What I tell people all the time is that we started out in a garden. That was by divine decree. He put us there for a reason. And in that space, we thrive. Coming back to my story, I started eating plant-based foods and became a person who made it a lifestyle because tragedy hit my family. In 2012, the day before my mother's 60th birthday, she was diagnosed with breast cancer. Now I come from a family of mixed cultural diversity. My mom's side is Polish. My father's side is African-American. So I grew up with collard greens and kielbasas. In our family though, <laughs> there was a lot of animal protein, a lot of dairy. I'm originally from Wisconsin and that is a cheese state. And we enjoyed ourselves. At one point before I moved to Houston, I was close to 300 pounds. No exaggeration. Eating heavy processed, foods that were just not healthy for me, not healthy for my family, ultimately brought us to a place where we ended up having my mom get diagnosed with cancer. And then after a retrospect, when I look back at our family history, I saw diabetes, cancer, hypertension, heart disease, in some form or fashion on both sides of my family. And for me, what I came to understand was that the the thing that stood out in both, both sides of the family was that we were eating a lot of animal-based foods. My mother went through a program called the Gerson Therapy. It was 100% plant-based diet. In order to cure her cancer, I will say it, a lot of people run from that because they, they were about liability, but we cured my mother's cancer and did so in a two-year period of time. She never had to do chemotherapy. She never had to do radiation. And it was in my work of oncology massage that I was able to get that information for her and then start to share it not only with my family and myself, but also with the people that were in communities like Third Ward in Houston, Texas. One of the challenges that we run into is that there's not nutrition education. And when there is, there's misinformation. When you look back at our grandmothers, grandfathers, even our parents' generation. Many of them had gardens. Many of them knew where their food came from. Most of them were cooking whole foods. Meats, dairies, that became something that became available later because people had more income that was afforded to them. But when it was time for lean meals, you saw beans and rice on tables. You saw collard greens, you saw sweet potatoes. And so, what I would say to, to most, if they're able, start really looking at the connection between the standard American diet, which is absolutely, absolutely a prescription for illness. So much so, I just found out recently that insurance companies have purchased stock in fast food companies. Life insurance companies are buying into fast food because they recognize that most people are addicted to fat, meat, dairy, and sugar, to Zainab's point about the sugars. 
If we get away from those foods and we go back to what's natural, what our bodies know what to deal with, how to process, we start to find that the diabetes starts to disappear. It's reversible actually if you're type two. If you're eating a plant-based, low fat, um, whole food diet, hypertension can go away. Um, heart disease can go away. Ocular degeneration goes away. There's so many studies that are connecting health and reversal of disease to plant-based diets that I've become extremely passionate about sharing it with people. Now, many of you might look at me and be like, well, how is she talking about this stuff? She's not skinny. You're right. Because for a long time, I still was stuck in a space where even though I was going into a plant-based diet, I didn't understand whole foods yet. I didn't understand that Oreos, although they're vegan and not a plant-based item, can still make you be a little thick. Going through the nutrition program that I'm going through now has helped me to start to understand how to get back to the garden truly. And it's in that space that I find passion around not only healing myself, which I'm continuing to do always, but also to share that message with everybody else. So today what we're gonna do is I'm gonna do a demonstration on one of my favorite dishes growing up. I used to love spaghetti. That was my jam. But now I do it in a different way. Still love it. It's my thing. We're gonna have spaghetti dinner tonight and then we're gonna top it off with a chocolate pudding dessert. All of which is going to be plant-based, delicious, flavorful. I promise you, you won't miss that other stuff. Now in this recipe, I'm going to be incorporating natural fats that are not processed. So what you'll see actually are just some nuts, which is done in a very small amount based on the size of the recipe we're doing. Because for me, what I'm learning is, it's not necessarily the type of fat that you're, let me back that up. You wanna do natural foods, natural fats. If it's done, do it in its most natural form, period. That being said, I'm gonna switch my camera because I want you to see what we're gonna do, okay? All right, hopefully all of you guys can see my station. Can you just raise your hand so I can make sure that you're seeing what I, what I got? Okay, cool. So today, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to make what I call zoodles. These are gonna be our spaghetti noodles. So what you're going to need are two large zucchini uh, zucchinis. Ideally, again, if you can do organic, I highly, highly, highly recommend it. The reason why I'm saying that is because organic vegetables are grown without pesticides and without the chemicals that are utilized on conventional vegetables and fruits that have been linked to certain cancers. They've been linked to um, impacts on our immune systems as well as our reproductive health. And so if you can, budget allowing, Go for the organic. If you can't, do what you do. Just, uh, just come back to the garden, okay? So today I'm gonna be using what we call a spiralizer. And this is gonna turn my zucchini into essentially spaghetti noodles. For those of you that are participating, what you wanna do is cut off the edges of your zucchinis so that you have a flat surface. For those of you who may not have a spiralizer at home, a potato peeler will work as well. And all you have to do is scrape it down and it will give you spaghetti noodles, okay? If you don't have spaghetti noodle, uh, a potato peeler, then you can just use a knife and make very thin shreds. So what I'm gonna do is place our zucchini onto here and begin to wind around. Now in a moment, I'll be able to show you what these look like. I intentionally cut my zucchini. Okay, did I, was, was, am I moving too fast, Alima? Okay. I, I intentionally cut my zucchini in half because when you are making these shreds, it's gonna make super long pasta noodles. And I don't like to have to fight a noodle to bite through it. So I cut it ahead of time just so that I'm able to uh, have it be more manageable. Now, because of the power of TV, I have done <laughs> a few of my zucchinis ahead of time just to make it easier. But for presentation purposes, I wanted to make sure that you were able to see how I was able to do that. And again, that was a long noodle and I cut these in half. So 
when we talk about carbs and spaghetti and stuff like that, these are your noodles, ladies and gentlemen. They are less than 30 calories, no fat whatsoever, have the texture of spaghetti, the mouthfeel of spaghetti. You just don't have the carbohydrates that are highly processed that would create sugar spikes in your body in front of your, your bowl or inside your bowl. You actually have something that's going to be very, very um, calming and soothing to your system. So we've got our pasta noodles here. All right, that being the case, I'm going to now move. All right, hold on a second. I'm trying to follow along with you. Yes. But I bought that spiralizer today and I don't know how to use it. Understood. So <laughs> Let me demonstrate. Okay. So which one did you use? Okay, got it. So which blade? So my blade right now is a little dirty because I just got done using it. Uh -huh. But there are blades that are, oh, they've got the bigger, the bigger holes and the smaller holes. Use the smaller holes for spaghetti. Uh-huh. The bigger holes for like a thicker spaghetti or close to a fettuccine. Mm -hmm. And then you use the bl the long blade for like a ribbon. Okay. So you're going to use the smaller blade. Okay. I I'll wait for you. We're going to put, we'll do it together. No, 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 no. Don't, I, I don't know what I'm doing. So I, I just wanted to know which one I was supposed to do. I'm going to keep working at it. It's okay. It's okay. I want to make sure because if anybody else has the same challenge, I want to make sure that I'm explaining to this, explaining to you appropriately so that I can empower you. Okay. Mm -hmm. So there's three different pieces to this, um, to this machine. You've got the, your blades here, you've got your press and you've got your base. Mm -hmm. We're using the smaller holes for the spaghetti mm -hmm. and you're just going to click it in. Like got that. that. Yep. You got that part? Yep. Okay, cool. So then you're gonna take your your uh, your crank or your your you know your second piece and you're gonna place it into your base, mm -hmm. and that's where you take and you place. Did you um you place your zucchini on one end and one end? You push it. Yep. And then you crank. Is it working for you? No, but that's okay. Keep going. I'm gonna figure it out. I'm gonna figure it out. If it doesn't go forward, huh? Like go backwards if it doesn't go forward. Oh, oh no, it's going. It's turning, but I don't see the nice spot. Oh wait a minute, there it go. All right, we working. All right, I got it. Okay, we got it. We got this. We're working together. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna hand this to my assistant. Thank you, assistant. I appreciate you. All right. So now Salima's got her noodles going. We are excited. Happy to know it's happening. All right. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to just talk about what's going to now be our meat filling. Because right now, these recipes are super simple, super easy. We've got our noodles already ready to go. You all right over there, Salima? We good? OK, awesome. The next thing we're going to do is prepare our meat mixture. And our meat mixture today is going to be portobello mushrooms and walnuts. Sounds crazy, but when these are processed in a food processor, they actually take on the texture and consistency of meat, hamburger specifically. If you don't have a food processor, you're going to take a knife and you're going to just chop mushrooms down as far as you can. You want to try to make these small meaty pieces. Different people like it different ways, but I, I really do try to mimic as much as I can the texture of hamburger. So as you can see, I'm chopping it with a knife, but in a moment, I'm gonna process it in my food processor because I really do want you to see if you have that type of equipment, how this can end up looking. It's really cool as it all comes together. Okay. And as you can see, I'm just doing a small, small dice. And it's, it's starting to kind of come together, just in small pieces. We know at the end of the day, this is not hamburger, right? And it, it, it makes me laugh when I hear people who are in the plant-based world say, oh, it's just like nacho cheese. No, it's not. No, it's not. It's going to have a resemblance of it. It can taste delicious, but it's not meat and it's not cheese. It's a plant. 
So if I can help you to understand to have your mentality into a space where it's not me, but it's a delicious replacement, you'll be in a happy place. That being said, this is... Thank you for saying that, Sasha, because, honey, I needed somebody to tell the truth about this here. You got to, babe. I mean, people will try to tell, they will try to sell it to you. And it's not, it's not the same thing. But at the end of the day, with, with a mind, you says, never oh, lie. Thank you. You're welcome. If you have a mind state that says, I'm looking to get away from those things because ultimately I find that they don't allow me to be my healthiest self. You don't want it to be those things. You want it to be something else. It can resemble, it can resemble a, 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 a animal product, but you're doing something else consciously to create a different experience. That being said, this is our diet. I'm just gonna jump in real quick. Look, <laughs> look. Yes, that's what I'm <laughs> Okay, sorry. Great job. And for those who are doing it at home, if yours looks like that, that's what we're going for. And if it's not, keep trying because you can't do anything but get better. Okay. Now, that being the case, I'm going to lift this up just a little bit. If you can see, this is dice, the diced mushrooms with a knife. I'm going to now process my mushrooms and I'm going to add walnuts because this is our fat for the dinner tonight into my food processor and I'm going to pulse it until I have a ground beef texture look, okay? I am gonna mute my um, uh, myself so that you guys don't hear this processing because it could be pretty loud and I don't wanna blow anybody's ears out. But as you can- While you're doing that, Stasha, uh, so I'm not, you can stay muted. I'm not a um, chef and I don't, I'm just gonna go ahead. Uh, if I try to blend this, it's not gonna be the same as a food processor, is it? don't want to blend it per se because it may blend it too much now if you pulse it that's yeah. something else okay mm -hmm. um you really don't want to have it blended to the point where you're almost like, like a, right smoothie. a smoothie yeah you don't want a baby food a different texture you know yeah but if i put it in there i just kind of pulse it and just chunk it where it's just like chunk chunk and then leave it whole i can because i just don't know if i'm gonna go buy a process for to be honest with you that's but so what I would suggest then is for now, just hand, chop, hand chop it, hand chop it, hand chop it, and you'll be fine, really. Because okay. I really do think if you try to blend it, it will probably blend it too much. Okay. How, what's the average price of a, a decent food processor? Mm, you know what? Target has stuff anywhere from 30 bucks up to 300 It just depends on what your budget will allow and what you really want to invest into your health, honestly. No recommendations? We body. Um, and it's a Platinum Pro, and this has a food processor and a blender on it. Okay. okay. It is a little older, though. I'm just saying. So we might have got it for twenty dollars. It might be sixty today. Who knows? We got does, a, does a ninja have? Does a ninja have the processor and the blending? The ninja, a ninja would work. A ninja would work. Again, you can pulse on it and a ninja. Yeah, I have a ninja. Do it. Do the ninja. Just pulse it. Like start. Turn it on. Give it a second or two. Turn it off. Turn it on and give it a second or two to turn it off. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right, I'm gonna pulse this really quickly and then I'll show you the end result. Salima, why you didn't tell me I could have came to your house for some dinner? Cause I don't have none of it. <laughs> you know, you know I would have brought a fork, a knife and a smile. You still can cause I don't like mushrooms, but I'm gonna cook this anyway. So <laughs> I'm when, done, when we get done cooking it, you will not feel like you're even eating mushrooms. So the flavors oh. are gonna be like uh, spaghetti. You're gonna work some magic and some voodoo because I ain't never not know I was eating mushrooms. <laughs> don't turn into the vegans. Don't turn into the vegan Sasha now. It tastes like <laughs> it's all about flavor. It's all about flavor. If it doesn't taste good, you're not eating it. <laughs> Not at all. Exactly. All right. So that being the case, I just want to show you. I'm going to put this up to the camera. You see how this kind of looks sort of like a, a, a ground beef texture, but not necessarily. It's just small ground, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're going to get this out the way. Thank you. And I'm going to move this back out so that you can see what I'm about to do. 
All right, so now we've got this mixture. I'm about to spoon this into my bowl. And then what we're gonna do is I have a pan. I'm trying to get Salima time to get her, her mushrooms together. I don't wanna go too fast. But honestly, you guys, a lot of these recipes will come together pretty quickly. For, for demo purposes right now, you know, we're just kind of going through them. And when I say that, that's not even a fair statement to say. I'm used to making this stuff. You know, this is the first time for everybody else. The reality of it is, is the more that you do this, the more second nature it becomes. That's just, you know, it's just like regular recipes. You got that favorite one that you know how to make and you can get done in 20 minutes. It's the same thing. Eventually, this will become super, super easy for you. And it won't be something that is time consuming. Because honestly, if we look at how quickly those noodles came together, that was done just like that. After we figured out how to use it, right? It wasn't, it was just like, okay, cool, got that. It's gonna be that way with these recipes on a very regular basis. Now, to our point about nutrition, I don't use oil in any of my cooking. I have learned through this journey that for me, when I started to look up the nutritional benefits of oil, I found very few. But I did find lots of connections to disease connected to them. So we're, we're told, oh, you know what? Eat healthy fats. We can. Nuts, avocados, seeds, those are in their whole form. That's okay. But for me, my understanding going through this nutrition program that I'm going through, processed fats, even if it's coconut, even if it's olive oil, there's no nutritional uh, value worth the amount of impact that they can have on your body. When I started to omit them from my diet, I did start to lose weight and I have a very difficult time losing weight because I also have a condition called polycystic ovarian syndrome, which essentially oftentimes has my body holding weight unnecessarily. Unnecessarily, do you hear me? Unnecessarily. I eat too many salads, I'm just saying, but okay. Um, <laughs> but when I, took, when I took the oils out, it, it became a lot easier for me to start to see a, a healthier outcome in my day, my, my body, my plants, I mean, my, my plate, my spirit, all of that. So we're gonna get ready now and we're gonna start to heat up our meat, meat uh, mixture. The first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna saute some onions. Again, I don't use oil. It's going to be crazy because you're going to think to yourself, wait a minute, there's no oil in her pan. How is she going to fry her onions? Wait, what are we doing here? Onions have a natural oil in them. And they actually fry up just like they would if you put oil in them without the oil. It just takes a second, but it happens. So that being the case, watch me work. All right, we're going to put these guys in here. Can you guys hear that sizzle? So uh, you so you putting that in there with nothing in that pan? Nothing in the pan. Exactly. I'm so mm. confused. I can see oh, my okay. face. We got a low flame because well, how you gonna keep burning? They they can't burn. Right. You have to um stir them. I'm gonna put a little bit of salt because I still do use salt, but I'm actually winning off of that as well. Because atherosclerosis is real and salt is being connected. I'm learning it's connected to um to that. The Himala is the Himalayan really any different than the iodized white salt? It absolutely is. It's got a lot of vitamins, minerals, and nutrients that uh, white salt does not. It, white salt has been stripped of all of its iodine, all okay. of its nutrients. These are things that we absolutely need in our bodies. We find uh, we're, a lot of women, I don't know if you guys have noticed it, but I know it's with a lot of my mothers, they're starting to lose their periods. Mm. And they're starting to have... Um, thyroid issues, many of them are iodine deficient. You can find that in Himalayan pink salt. Okay. Yeah, along, so we... along with other nutrients, but yes, Himalayan salt is way better for you than okay. the white salt. And it tastes better. And it tastes yeah. better. You don't need as much. No. You don't need as much because again, in its natural form, your body knows what to do with it. It benefits you greater when you are using it as close to nature as possible. And the Himalayan salt has not been stripped. Now, I don't know if you guys can see this, but my onions are not burning, but they're frying. I put a little bit of um, salt in here to help sweat them a little bit. 
but they are sauteing. And in a few minutes, you will see that they have actually started to look like I, I fried them regularly. Again, you want to be layering your food in flavor. So every layer I do, I season. So with my um with my um my onions, I'm just putting a little bit of salt because I just want the oils to come out of them just a little bit. But this isn't gonna burn as long as you pay attention to your pan, you're in a good place. How are we doing, everybody, as far as like as as far as where we're at in the process? We good? Um, yeah, yes. I agree. Um, the uh, you have your your followers on Facebook are saying, I noticed the difference. You with the Himalayan salt, they agree. No oil. Wow, this is you cooking like fire, Sasha. You doing an awesome job. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, so how high is my heat supposed to be? Huh? How high is my heat supposed to be? So like this, said, go. Uh, medium low because you aren't trying to burn them you're just trying to start to cook your your um onions until they're translucent and right. that can take a few minutes we are going to be cooking these down for a few seconds okay right. you, you, you do want a, a pretty warm pan when you put your onions in because you want that process to start right away again you're trying to release the, oil, the oils in the onions. People don't think that vegetables have oil. They do. They have their own juices. When we put these, uh, or not necessarily oils, but they have their own uh, water, right? And so onions have oil. Walnuts have oil. That's why we're not adding any extra oils to this because we're going to have enough fats in here for us to carry the recipe. It's not going to be a difficult thing to do. You guys Oh, go ahead. There was a question in the chat. Is it okay to use avocado oil? Ideally, if you can get away from processed oils, period, that is the goal. If you want to use something to help saute some food, use vegetable broth. Use water. I'll, I'll water saute in a minute. And it doesn't take away from the flavor of your food. Um, it, and it allows your food actually to get, if you're using vegetable stock instead of the oil, it actually gives it an enhanced flavor because now you've just done that. You've added another layer of flavor, but you haven't added the fat that's going to clog up your, your arteries. You haven't added the fat that's going to ultimately lead you down a path of, of unhealthiness where you have to worry about diabetes or heart disease. Those, um, those vegetable stocks and those broths, aren't they high in sodium? You can get low sodium on um, vegetable broth, or here's a better, a better one. And I don't know how many people have this kind of time afforded to them, but making your own veggie stock is not hard. It's okay. literally taking some uh, vegetable peels and some, you know, stuff from the, from another mm -hmm. recipe that you might've made and putting it in a pot, boiling it. You know, you mm -hmm. can confirm it. At the end of the day, guys, this is what I want to tell you. And again, I'm saying this as a person who is going through my journey myself. Mm -hmm. Our health is our responsibility. But again, the closer we stick to what Allah gave us, the healthier we will be. If you want to have um, the, the veggie stock, make it. Take a Saturday. Somebody had mentioned meal prepping. Take a Saturday and just get all your food together. It isn't that hard. It's just a matter of prioritizing it. We get so distracted by this world. It's so easy for us to let somebody else make our food. But in doing that, we give someone else the responsibility of our health. I've done that for a very long time and I'm not interested anymore because that led me to a place where at one point in my life, I was extremely sick and I watched my mother go through cancer and had I continued to go down the same road, I could have easily been her. That's not in my forecast anymore, inshallah. But I'm doing what he told us. He put us there for a reason, y'all. That wasn't by accident. It wasn't by accident. Think about that. Okay. So now I'm going to get ready. Are we seeing how these onions look? To the crowd, does this look like some onions that you would have put some oil in, like just without the grease on them? Do they look sauteed? It's far away, but I, but I believe you. Here. Yeah, they don't look burnt. Not burnt. Mm -mm. Just cooked. So now what I'm going to do. Slim, are you okay? 
Okay. I'm going to add our walnut and uh, mushroom mixture to my onions. Okay. Put like that in there. I don't believe in wasting food. Okay. Now I put this in here. This is going to begin to cook down. It look dry, Sasha. Huh? It look dry. Okay, got you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place my seasonings. I'm mm -hmm. going to place garlic powder, one tablespoon, a half a tablespoon of onion powder, two teaspoons of Italian seasoning, or you can use one teaspoon of basil, one teaspoon of oregano, dried. I got a teaspoon of salt and I got a half a teaspoon of uh, red pepper flakes. I'm putting that all up in here. I know it looks like I heard you, Baina. You'll see in a minute. Yeah. Why are you acting like I don't know I'm live on Facebook? I just be just be in my little world. So. Okay. Now, what I'm doing is I'm letting the flavors just get in here right now. Still looks dry, right? Yes, ma'am, but it's going to get good. I know it is. It's smelling good over here, but at the same time, I just, I'm trying to make sure that we're walking this journey together. Mm -hmm. Now, as my mushrooms heat up, they're going to start to release their water. They're going to look like they're a little mush. Do you see how the, the color is changing? Mm -hmm. It went from that light white. I'm turning my heat up just a little bit because I want to keep this up. You know, I'm using an electrical um, you know, portable uh, um, stove. So I'm trying to make sure we stay on point with this. For those who are at home, you want to make sure that your flame or your heat is at a medium, um, medium heat so that you can make sure you continue to hear your simmer. And if you look at the bottom of my pan, there's nothing sticking. So there's no burn, there's nothing sticking. My mushrooms are starting to really release their water. It looks like they're sizzling. I wish I had a, a zoom for my camera. So I'm gonna look at it so you guys can see this a little bit more. As you can see. Uh, I'm actually impressed that that's not sticking. Is that because of the type of uh, heat uh, sur surface you're using, like with a regular stove top? Also no. not thick like no. that? This is because of the mushrooms releasing their water and uh, releasing any um, you know stuff that would stick on the bottom. Mushrooms mm. are full of water. They're full mm. of water. If you just cook them down, mm -hmm. seriously, you can put mushrooms and onions in a pan, and I mm. promise you, when they start cooking, you will have a pool of water in your pan that you have to cook down. I've never cooked them without oil. I'm definitely going to have to think, clean So I'm using a nine-stick pan because I was just not a believer. And so it's it's, it's, it's it's sticking a little bit, but it's not like burning. Gotcha. Um, Turn your heat down just a little bit then because you may just have it up too high. And that's the mushrooms in there or that's just the onions? No, that's, it. that's everything in here now. Okay, yeah. So, yeah. Did you just put the mushrooms in? No, they've been in here for a little bit. Okay. And I, I put them in there when you put them in there. So Sasha, when you're cooking and it's all plant-based, you don't really need a, a lot of heat like you would if you were cooking meat. No, not at all. Because again, you, these are vegetables, right? So they're going to release their waters. They're going to start to break down due to the heat. And it doesn't require a true breakdown like meat protein would have you do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Really, you start to see a little bit of uh, more hydration come in there now that your flame is down a little bit. I don't know. I mean, it ain't burning, but I don't, I don't. This is what I want you to do. And we're going to do this together. Uh -huh. I want you to get a fourth of a cup of water. Uh-huh. And we're going to do this on film so you guys can see how this works. All 
All right. I want you to pour it into your pan. All of it? Uh -huh. Well, uh, do it incrementally, but to make sure that you don't have anything on the bottom of the pan. Okay. And I want you then to stir it up. Starting to look like meat. I was just about to say that, honey. I was like, that definitely looked like ground turkey. Yep, absolutely. And all this is, is mushrooms and onions and some walnuts. I like all the ingredients. So I know I'm going to enjoy it, eating it because I, everything you put in there, I, I eat by itself anyway. Yeah, inshallah. How's it smelling in those kitchens, ladies? Right. I missed the part where did you did you soak your walnuts before you started? You want to soak your walnuts because there um there are enzymes within them that that prevent you from digesting easily. It's okay if you didn't though. It's okay. I was gonna say that wasn't part of that wasn't part of the instructions. I didn't do that. So I apologize. Okay. I wasn't sure. I I had stepped away and I wasn't sure if I had heard that because I know I normally. If I'm gonna use nuts in, in cooking, I will soak them and I didn't I wasn't sure I had I thought I had missed it. Okay. You didn't you didn't miss it. I forgot to add it to the instructions. You still can eat them. It's not gonna hurt you. You might be a little uh, boisterous later on this evening. Is that soaking it? Yeah, does that take away the um like if it's a is it cause like you know how with starches it takes away the gas, the air in there, like lentils, like how you soak lentils. Is that why you would soak the walnuts? Same reason? Similar concept, yeah. It just, you know, it helps to break it down a little bit easier uh, for digestion. And yeah. um it also softens up the nuts themselves as well. And yeah. it's even more like um like a, a granular of meat or ground beef or something like that. Mm-hmm. How we doing? Is it still sticking or are you okay? Yeah, I'm good. How long do I got to cook this for? So we just want to cook it until it starts to look like ground beef, okay? We'll soak it in and, and the nuts and water also, will the nuts retain the water, make more, making them more moist when you cook them? Correct. Yes, that is true. That is true. So our next step, once we got our hamburger, our, our, uh, our mushroom mixture, uh, bubbling and cooking looking like meat i want you to take your favorite pasta sauce notice no label because we ain't got no endorsements so i ain't pushing nobody um <laughs> take your favorite pasta sauce and you're going to pour it on top of your mixture make it as juicy or as dry as you like i like mine a little little juicy a little, little moist you know for sure our seasoning in here so we don't have to worry about doing it again but for those of you who really like to have a lot of flavor in your uh food by all means go ahead add some more garlic powder add some more onion italian seasoning. i like my um spaghetti to have I, sometimes i put like a it's probably not a good thing to put but the barbecue sauce because it has a lot of you know barbecue sauce is processed but hey, i like that barbecue sauce type spaghetti with the sweet and the savory sure so you know how you can do that? If you, can, if you want to do the, the barbecue sauce, again, I would mm -hmm. definitely look out for the high fructose corn syrup that might be mm -hmm. in it. But let's mm -hmm. just say that you did more of a natural sauce but still wanted a sweetener in it. You could easily mm -hmm. use honey. You could easily use maple syrup. And what about the barbecue? How would I get the barbecue flavor? Um, I would say, honestly. Bar barbecue make, seasoning, maybe? If you can make it on your own, do so. If you can't, then just try to find like those I don't know how to make barbecue sauce. What's in barbecue sauce? No, don't have any processed sugars at all. What's the ingredients in barbecue sauce? What's, how do you make barbecue sauce? Oh, oh, okay. So we, we got recipes. We got all recipes. right. I'll go off now. Thank you, Sasha. Yeah, yeah. Um, so this now should look like how your normal hamburger and your spaghetti sauce would look. Are we on yep. the same page? those of us who are doing it together looks like spaghetti sauce mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Salima. 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 Open, mind. open mind Salima no 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 I'm looking at mine I'm just I, I'm trying I, I'm doing it but I'm just saying this is, this, 
This one. Let me see if I can give you my other camera. Let me see. Hold on a second. Yeah, because I want to see yours. Yeah, Sasha's a real professional. Yeah, Sasha. hers do. I'm just like, mine don't look like that. <laughs> Where is it? Well, let's see what you have. Let's see what you have. I have to stretch it over here. Here we go. Oh, I don't know. I'm gonna eat it. Just put my plate to the side. <laughs> it, looks it, looks it looks good. You can take it off with the heat now. We're gonna turn this off. We just needed to really heat up our sauce because everything else was hot. And if you want to, I have a question. Like, if you're adding, because I know, I, well, I don't know, but my family likes chunky. Yeah. Sauce. So, like, we have, like, big chunks of tomatoes in there and stuff. That's fine. It's not going to change. No. How okay. Yeah, you're totally fine if you do that. No problem at all, in fact. It's actually, it, to me, that adds to the, to the, to the texture, the experience. It, it makes it better. Okay. So now we can take it off of our fire. So that's what I'm going to do just for a second. And we're gonna build a plate. Now, mind you, I had my spices on this, so this looks a little, looks a little dirty just because my spices were on there. But we're gonna take our pasta and we're going to put it on the plate. Sasha, did you have to cook the pasta at all or are you just eating it raw? I prefer it raw because I'm already doing a heated mushroom and I like to have a balance of raw and cooked in my food. And there was a time where I was almost 100% raw and really found that for digestion purposes, that was an ideal type of eating style for me, but it wasn't a sustainable thing for a long period of time for me. So what I did was I found a way to make a happy medium. So oftentimes what I will do is I will have a component of my meal that is raw and I will have a component of my meal that is cooked. For those of you who do not want to eat raw zucchini, and that's okay too, you can easily pop this in a pan and, and put it in there for like two or three minutes just to warm it up, to soften it, and then you can use it as a regular pasta noodle. But I like mine with the uh, the raw the raw noodle. Now all I'm gonna do is put my sauce on top. And you have dinner. Bon appetit, by Ina. You going over? Come on over. You know, Salima already know I'm coming over. <laughs> Salima already know. She put my I want plate. to see Salima's plate before we move to dessert. Sasha, that looks so good. Thank you. This is spaghetti dinner. It's just made with mushrooms. You know, it it, it had no oil added extra. There's very can you toss it around in it so I can see what it looks like with it mixed all up in the in the done. Hold on, let me <laughs> get a fork covered in the I just want to see. <laughs> I just want to see. <laughs> but like I need I need to see for myself. I need to see for myself. Y'all know what I'm talking about because mine doesn't look doesn't look neat. it looks messy. You know what I'm saying? Like it looks like that. <laughs> Like this, Fatima? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I'm like, okay. Okay. Right. I'm going to just show y'all real quick. Uh, hold on. But wait, now that zucchini's raw. That's going to crunch. But she said you could cook it and she could you put it in the oven and maybe put some Himalayan salt. Salima, don't let your face do nothing. You know how you... <laughs> 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 Like that I was going to say, oh, dang, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to need it. Remember the episode of Oprah, that lady made that food, and she went, <laughs> was like, oh. <laughs> it's good. I know it's good. I know so, it's good. I will say, I've never had raw zucchini. Okay. And that's not bad. Mm -hmm. So I like the raw zucchini. I haven't tasted the mushroom chunk yet, but otherwise it looks, it, it, it tastes good. And I'm a really picky eater. So if I don't like it, it's going to be hard for me to fake it. Um, so, all right. I'll bite. Okay. <laughs> I, I'm, not, I'm not going to become a plant-based, uh, you know, full plant-based because, yeah, we meat eaters around here. But we yes. could increase the amount of veggies in our diet. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. And the reality of it is, is that most people are not going to switch over like that. You know what I mean? But if it means adding one more salad to your, to your week, 
or if it means adding more and more smoothies to your week, then, you know, that's to your benefit. And that's one thing what we're going for, you know? One thing you said early in the, in, the, in the program, Sasha, which is very important, is that it's all about perspective and a mind a mind shift. So I'm not talking to Salim anymore. I'm really talking to myself in general that, you know, we just have to, instead of, like we said, trying to replace those unhealthy things with healthy things and, and, and want to get the same um, gratification and that same, you know, taste that you do from, they're different things. So they're not going to taste the same, but it's about looking, thinking about, right. What am I putting in my body? That's do right. I want that thing that's going to kill me and taste good? Or do I want to live and, you know, have food that tastes good as well, but it's not killing me? Exactly. Exactly. At the end of the day, life and death can start at the end of your fork, mm -hmm. literally. So it's just a choice. You know what I mean? Now, for those of you who do not want to eat raw zucchini, and that's okay too, pop it into your pasta sauce or put it in a saute pan by itself and heat it up for a few minutes. It'll make it softer. It'll, it'll warm it up a little bit too, you know? But you can easily pop that into your pasta sauce and mix it in there and just have your pasta with your, um, your, your sauce. Mm -hmm. For those of you who are not into the idea of doing a zucchini noodle at all, if you choose to do pasta, maybe go for a bean pasta, like a lentil or brown rice pasta rather than the processed wheat. It, it just could be, you know, just alternatives to the traditional. That's all. Okay. What was mama's opinion, Salima? Yeah. What was, what was mama's opinion? What you say, Charlotte? It was good. It's good. <laughs> she said it's good. Yay. I'm happy. I'm happy. All right. Okay. So for, for the sake of, where are we on time? Cause we started at 530. So we're, um, uh, so if you go ahead and just um, you can go a little faster on the dessert part. I won't I won't follow you. Now. My dessert is super easy. I mean, my dates too, please. Thank you, sister. You're amazing. I appreciate you. You're in a, a beautiful soul. Okay, thank you. So thank you. Our dessert is going to be an amazing, decadent, and delicious chocolate pudding. It has four ingredients. We have soaked dates that have been soaking for an hour. We've got three ripe bananas. And for many people, they go for the green ones. The idea is to eat ripe fruit. It is better for digestion. So look for the ones that are speckled or that have the brown marks on them. Some people are grossed out by that, but I promise you, if you taste the banana like this, it is the sweetest banana you'll ever have in your life. We're going to be doing three tablespoons of chia seeds. And we're going to be doing two tablespoons of cocoa powder, okay? So let's put it into our blender. I'm going back to my camera so you can see what we're doing here. All right, we're gonna start by putting in our dates and our half cup of date water. You want that because that's providing some sweetness. These are tradition, just regular medjool dates. Dump them in. This recipe is super fast, super easy, and really delicious. It's packed full of nutrients. It is easy to digest. It won't cause any sugar spikes. It is a perfect way to match that chocolate craving that you may be having. Um, and you really have the ability to play with this as much as you want. Ideally, I would say stick to this recipe, although we're not adding any milks or dairy or stuff like that, you still want to be mindful that um, chia seeds do have a specific amount of fat in them. One tablespoon is 60 calories. Um, and it is, um, I think, four total grams of fat for one, one tablespoon. We're going to be using three. We're doing that on purpose because we want the thickness of our pudding to be like it would be if we were utilizing dairy. So I've just placed three organic bananas into my blender, okay? I'm using a high-speed blender, but you can easily use uh, a traditional blender to make this. You can use the Ninjas, anything like that will work, okay? The next thing we're gonna do is add our chia seeds. One, two, 
three. And for those of you that don't know, this recipe is in my new cookbook. Um, it's called Sasha's Veggie Life. We're going to be putting the link in the bio for those of you who are open to getting it. It is a plant-based guide to transitioning to plant-based eating. And it's super easy to make these recipes. They generally don't take longer than 10 to 20 minutes to have a full meal. I made it for the mom that is busy, that's working, or for the dad who's trying to get something together before his queen gets home. So it's not difficult at all. The next and final ingredient that we're going to add is two tablespoons of cocoa powder. Any questions so far? We're good? Okay. This now is going to go and get blended up. So I'm transitioning to the other camera so you can see me. All right. I'm going to put myself on mute because, again, I don't want this to blow people's ears out. And I'll see you in a second. So the link to her uh, website and to her where to purchase her uh, her new cookbook coming out, we put it in the chat for you. So if you are interested and would like to support and, and learn about these things, you can find that information there. So Sasha, you could just shake your head. So I'm put, I put the bananas in there. I'm, am I putting the dates in there too? No, you can't hear me. Okay. You said, yeah, you put the dates in there. Put the dates and the water. Yeah. And the, and the seeds. Yeah. She said three tablespoons of the cheese. All right. Now, what if I got a seeded date? I don't have seed. I got dates with seeds in them. I don't have a, I don't have a seed. No. I don't have a you definitely take those out. They're going to tear I'm gonna them. I'm going to take them out. Yeah, they're going to tear up the machine. They're yeah. Gonna break. You want to take those out always because to Bayana's point, you will tear your machine up. Mm -hmm. So we just got done blending. We're still rocking with Salima. She's 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 following. Yeah, Remember? that's all right. Keep going. By the magic of my, of TV. <laughs> you can top your favorite uh, berry, maybe mm -hmm. some. No, you got uh, me a date. As soon as you said dates, I was done. I didn't even care what happened after that. As in, I like them, or as in, I can't stand them. As in, I, I will eat them and be full for a week. I eat the whole two pound box of mature dates. I love it. This mm. recipe is on page 25 of the Sasha's Veggie Life cookbook. Super simple ingredients, natural, healthy, everything is in its natural state, minimally processed, and that's good, y'all. Saying. That's what I got. Yay. Yeah. Yeah. Looks delicious. I had <laughs> I had specifically Sasha's um key lime. <gasps> it was delicious. Okay. Let me just tell oh you. Oh my goodness. Is that in the book? And I was like, look, let me tell you, no, Bane, I was just like you when we was making the food because she had me help for it. I was like, oh my. No, she fed me. What she fed me. <laughs> she yes, she used the mushrooms and everything and, and the walnuts, but it was from a different salad, like an Asian salad or something. But when I tell you that salad was so good and it was filling. You know how sometimes you eat salads and you don't feel full afterwards? Mm -hmm. I thought I was like, girl, I'm out. You know, I was cracking jokes. I was like, I'm going to have to go get something to eat after this. But I'm telling you, I felt full, mm -hmm. refreshed. The food was so good. And that key line. She's talking she, about it. was hidden. <laughs> <laughs> lived in Houston. I went to a, a party at her house and she sped us and she had something. Was it the key line, Sasha? It was key line. Yeah, Fatima and uh, Fatima was there the same day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We were together. We've been a couple of times. We've been a couple and, times. It was delicious. Oh. Well, is the it key lime recipe is going to be in my next cookbook that's coming out. I'm going to be creating. Uh, Sahur and um, Iftar plant-based uh, plant-based eating cookbook that inshallah will be out April 1st. So okay. that will also be some more plant-based ideas for how you can have optimal health in Ramadan mm -hmm. eating fulfilling, nourishing, healthy foods. Okay. 
All right, Dwayne. so I'm putting this thing in the blender. And, am I blending it? Blending it until it's completely smooth. Okay, got it. And you said I, the key lime recipe is going to be in the uh, April 1st book. It's not in this first one. The key lime pie is not in the first one, but the chocolate pudding that we just made tonight and yes. uh, mm -hmm. the pad thai that um, Fatima just got done referencing is mm -hmm. in the Sasha's Veggie Life cookbook. And okay. that's available today. And we've got the link on the Facebook page, on the Instagram page, I believe, and on YouTube. And it's in the chat. On the chat as well. Yes, support us because, you know, it's hard on I just, I just purchased my Sasha. Oh, mashallah. Thank you so much, sweetheart. I know you'll love it, really. And, you know, you can reach out to me anytime if you have any questions. Yes, ma'am. How we looking, Salima? That's looking real good. Was that, did you put a half a cup of water? Don't be looking at my thing like that. No, I'm, just, I just, I'm just trying to make sure you put a half a cup of water in, right? Yeah. Okay, good. All right. So, I don't know it's already blended, but we're going. No problem. So go ahead and taste it. The more that this, if you allow it to, the thicker it will get because the chia seed will become gelatinous in nature once they're hydrated. And so your pudding will get thicker and thicker as it has time to sit, but that looks like a good texture for right now. Okay. Uh, Salima, I was able to uh, drop the links in the chat on Facebook, but I was not able to drop the links in YouTube. Okay. Yeah. You can... Would you, you can take some of this. What you want? Oh, you want to put it in there? That's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I got my boot sancha. Ooh, it's on and crack a lack Oh, yeah. Right, no, I'm pudding, though. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I'm not a pudding person. Oh, but. I think it needs, but I, so it has the texture. I just probably need to, um, I need to pulse it a little bit more. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I do it for a few minutes. You don't pulse. Okay, today. Well, you blend, but I need to do it a little longer. So come on, Sean, you, you part of this too now. What you say? What? You got to give your feedback. The flavor. Yes, the feedback. She, said the she said the flavor is delicious. Mashallah. Can she taste the date? Can y'all taste the date? You taste the sweetness, but not necessarily. Yeah. No, not the date itself. No. Can you taste the chocolate? Yeah, and I can in the seeds. So it's a little bit of. You have to. You have to. That's it. why you have to blend it some more because yeah. it's creamy. Um, so it could take on the true consistency of the pudding. But it is. It is. So it is creamy. So it just. It just needs to be uh, blended a little bit longer. A little bit but longer. uh, I could do this. You could don't. Well, she said she could do this. All right. <laughs> <laughs> It okay. is one of my favorite desserts that I put into the cookbook this time, you guys. And again, you know, these are all plant-based. We're very close to the garden, minimally processed. Your body knows what to do with them. And as you saw, very little fat goes into these foods. There's no processed sugars in any of them. And ultimately, you just feel good eating it. You don't feel guilty because, you know, you just ate two bananas. Mm -hmm. you know what and I mean? what I like about it also um, is that, so I have picky eaters for children. Um, and who have um, quite a bit of food allergies. And so, um, you know, these, like they don't eat chocolate, but this might be a way, you know, well, I would have to get dark chocolate. I don't know. But wait a minute. I also have a banana pudding recipe that is very similar in makeup with this that will be in the Iftar book, um, the Zahur Iftar book. But um, that w there's so many things that you can do with this base, and the base being banana and chia seeds. And oh, this don't even have no milk in it. Oh, I can't, my kid can eat this. Um, so no, I, so I, I like I like that idea as well because um, he he has like allergies to like very basic foods. That, I mean, well, additives that are in a lot of foods like soy. Yep. And and gluten, he's you know allergic to wheat. I'm sorry, not gluten, wheat. And uh, 
yeah, my poor baby is just allergic to everything. So having some alternatives that are easy um, and that don't have its allergens in and now, you know, I don't know if you're going to eat it or not, but at least we have some uh, additional options and we're always looking for um, new foods to try uh, because of that. So I didn't see anything here that had any of his allergens in it. So that's a win for me. But if it is generally safe, but again, you know, there are, there are, there are going to be some recipes that have nuts in them. Yeah, so the nuts, that's the, yeah, he can't have the nuts. So right. yeah, I can't do that. Yeah. You can be protective in that way. But for the most part, though, you're eating from out of the garden. Generally, when I shop, I stay in the produce department. I don't generally veer anywhere else in this grocery store because that is my safe space. Most people are not going to be allergic to the produce. And when I say that, I don't just mean fruit. I mean vegetables. I mean Again, um, the, the fruits and I mean herbs, things like that. There's a plethora. There's so many things you can do in the plant world that allows you to re really feel like your options are just endless. And, you know, you don't have to worry about as many um, challenges with food and allergies if you do stay in that, that plant-based realm. And again, I'll just say this one more time. And again, I know budgets being what they are, people have to make decisions for themselves. But if you can go organic, please... Yeah, yeah. Ooh, it's safer. Samia, what did you do? Huh? Something is wrong with you. Um, a participant who said they purchased your copy that was. You don't uh, think I know? Rakaya. Rakaya oh. purchased her copy. Okay. Uh, thank you, Rakaya. Inshallah, you will enjoy every recipe, really. You guys, it, I really tried to make it so that it was for the cook who doesn't know how to cook. Or the cook that's like a, a mini Gordon, Gordon Ramsay. Like I tried to make these, <laughs> you know, uh, really uh, easy for everybody. There are definite plant-based recipes that are really just about like smoothies and salads, but then there's also transitional recipes. Because at the end of the day, for a meat eater, you're not gonna stop eating spaghetti if you don't have a, a comparable, you know, replacement for it. So in the book, I'll give you recipes like lasagna and nachos that are 100% plant-based. But when you taste them, they remind you of the traditional recipe. You just don't have the guilt or the uh, the health concerns. So, you know, I, I feel like for so many of us, we're trying to figure it out. We're trying to get to a place where we can understand this thing called nutrition and health. We're told so many different things and so many different opinions are out there. But to me, the closer to nature we are, the, the better we are. And so I pray that inshallah, this information, this demo was beneficial to you. Um, if you feel like, you know, this was beneficial, please tell your friends, help me spread the word about this book. Uh, I'm not just pushing it for pushing its sake. I don't want to keep seeing us die from diabetes. I don't want to keep seeing us die from cancers and hype, you know, hypertension and, you know, glaucoma being an issue in families. I don't want to see limbs cut off just because nobody taught us how to eat well, or they keep telling us to eat the things that make us sick. Try to go back to the garden. I think you'll find health. That's really where it's at. And I, again, I really want to thank you for letting me be here to talk about what it is that I, I do in my day to day, how I eat, what I'm trying to, you know, uh, promote to our communities, to our families, hopefully for generations to come. So again, thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you, Salam. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. This was this was great. Like I said, you got me in the kitchen cooking, and I I, I don't do that, <laughs> so not regularly anyway. Um, and so, and then in you know, another way of cooking. Again, I'm a picky eater, so if you got me to be a believer, that's you know kudos to you. <laughs> um, and so, definitely, we'll get the cookbook and the you know try to. And then what I like also too is that it's a lot of physical, like, you know, so that's things like, especially like, you know, young children are getting them into like, they'll have fun with that spiralizer, just being able to crank it out so you can make it fun. And um, like you said, colorful and, um, and then it's healthy too. And it tastes, you know, the taste is pretty good. Actually, like I said, I don't like mushrooms, but uh, you, I think you, you might have me on that one. <laughs> so Alhamdulillah, thank you uh, so very much. Any uh, questions or additional um, comments for any either one of our presenters. We want to thank both uh, Zainab and Sasha for the wealth of information they shared with us today. So any um, questions or comments for our presenters? Um, uh, does have an Instagram or any? Can you show um, your Instagram, Facebook, where can they follow you, Sasha and Zainab? Um, Zainab, you want to give them your Instagram? Yeah, I'll give them my Instagram. Okay. Um, 
<laughs> yeah, so on Instagram, I am Sasha's Veggie Life. So S is in Sam, A is in Apple, C is in Charles, H is in Henry, A is in Apple, S is in Sam, Veggie Life. So V E G G I E L I F E. Um, on Facebook, is it Sasha's or just Sasha? Sasha's. Sasha's. Mine. Um, mm -hmm. I will be launching, inshallah, in June, a health and wellness. Facebook page that will go through nutrition recipes, um, how to transition over uh, out of the standard American diet into more of a plant-based eating uh, lifestyle. It's not a, a you know a, a food Nazi type situation where you got to switch over from uh, you know from meat to twigs and berries overnight. No, we don't do that. We take your humanity into into play and we work through how to get you to the goals that you want. And so. That's going to be, inshallah, in June that it will be available. And so I will have the Sasha's Veggie Life page available um, at that time. But right now we're still doing some construction and uh, getting some concepts together for everyone. So for right now, if you want to learn more about what I do, um, you can definitely hit me on Sasha's Veggie Life. I also have a link on to uh, my, uh, my Instagram page that will direct you to my subscription page on that page. If you want to get notifications about the new uh, Suhoor and Iftar cookbooks that are coming out, or um, if you're, I have another one coming out for pregnant mamas called Hungry Like a Mother. Um, if you're pregnant or have just had a baby and you want to learn about, you know, uh, pregnancy health and uh, eating during those times so that you can minimize gestational diabetes, swelling, um, or edemas, um, things like that, or just be able to be at your highest level while you're bringing in this miraculous little being, then, you know, those books are coming. And if you get up uh, onto my subscription page and give me your email address, I can kid you into the family. And when things come about, I'll let you know, you'll be the first to know about it. Awesome. 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 Uh, Zainab, did you have anything you wanted to share? No, I don't. Okay. Okay. Um, well, th again, thank you to uh, our feed on Facebook sends a lot of love and a lot mm -hmm. of likes. Um, and they said the food looks good. Um, Salima, they said your spaghetti looks good. Oh, um, thank you. That came <laughs> on our Facebook live. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you. So uh, we appreciate everyone who joined us today. Uh, so before you go, we put in the in our in the Zoom chat, we'll put on um, social media chat as well uh, a survey. So we do we do these programs and with the intention and the hope that they are beneficial to those who attend. We so appreciate your time and, and giving your time to us because that's one of the most precious things we 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 possess. And so please, please. Um, Take the survey, it's, it's, it'll take you like five minutes to do and give us feedback. Let us know what went, went well, um, what could we improve upon. If you have a suggestion, we are very much open to suggestions about topics or speakers that you would like to see in this type of platform in the future. Um, we really do take uh, the feedback that we get from there to inform how we do our, our future programming. Um, so please, please, if you can, we'll also send it out by email. If you could fill it out for us, we really appreciate it. Uh, be on the lookout, our next self alignment session will be in June um, the third Saturday in June I think it's like the 19th but don't quote me on that um, and it that one will be around money um, budgeting and how to um, improve our finance our, our financial situation our financial outlook so be sure to uh, again like us on Facebook at Muslim Act Collective on Instagram. Um, find us on YouTube and subscribe so we can get a, a full-fledged uh, link for our channel um, so that you can watch previous programs that we have done and also so you can stay informed about what we have coming up um, next. Uh, and so with that, again, we want to thank our, our presenters, Sasha and um, Zaina. We want to thank uh, our, our co-host for the evening, uh, Hania, for helping us uh, maintain our, our online presence um, and everybody who participated with questions and comments. Uh, we are so, so very grateful that you all joined us and participated with us today. And uh, with that, is there any other things um, from a Muslim Mac Collective housekeeping thing that I'm forgetting that I need to say before we log off? This is for my Muslim Mac Collective team members who are joining us. 
I'm not sure. I did um I did drop the survey in the Facebook chat and um also the link to Sasha's book and the link to yes and the link both all links have been dropped. All links have been dropped. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, so much. You guys did an awesome job. I learned a lot today. My son was looking at the recipe and we were like, yeah, we can try that. And he's a he's a huge meat eater. So you got him open and that's saying a lot. <laughs> it's all about transition. That's all it is. Baby steps, baby steps. <laughs> I'll take it. Okay, ladies. Well, um, enjoy the rest of your evening. Uh, try these recipes. It's worth it. And um, and then let us know, um, share it with your friends and, you know, post follow up comments like I tried it and let us know honestly what you thought, um, because that will help improve uh, what Sasha is doing and, uh, you know, get us all on this uh, healthier journey. So in fact, if you when, once you get the book, make any recipe out of it and post it on your social media and tag me on it so I can see what level of what, what level of uh, foot in, in, in the pot you got into when you made it, so <laughs> I'd love to see it. All right. So any other final comments before we close out for this evening? Thank you. All right. Thank you, ladies, and enjoy the rest of your evening and the new week to come. All right. Assalamu alaikum. Wow.